What's going on, man? Not much, brother. Just woke up, you know, got up really early, had a shower, did my, you know, my daily morning routine, and then um, now we're here now. Day off? Yeah, well, it's a public holiday, yeah, so, yeah. you know, you can't can't complain with that. Three-day weekend. It's the best. <laughs> well, it's pretty much every day is a weekend for me. Like, Correct. You know, or every day, every day you got to treat every day as like a, you know, a holiday. Yeah, every day is is the best day of your life, man. Pretty much. Yesterday's yeah. gone. Tomorrow's never a guarantee. Yep, that's pretty much it. That's it. Everyone, this is Josh. I'm gonna butcher. Is it Farugia? Farugia. Farugia. Yeah, not many people can get it right. <laughs> <first time. laughs> I got a pretty weird last name. I know about it. Uh, yeah, that's all right. I, I sort of got it. <laughs> yeah, no, he's pretty close. Yeah. Um, Josh is a mate of mine who I know through our. Tie in with male entertaining. Oh, yeah, that's correct. What I, what I mean, I met, first meet with the dinner. The, the dinner, yeah, yeah, that's right. We had a was a dinner a or a job. Or a job? Dinner. That was a dinner. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Because you did the strip at the job that I did. The top was up in, up yeah, in, up yeah, in the yeah, sunny yeah. coast. And you le- that and I you was left, gone left, by the time yeah. you got there. I was like, get me out of here. This yeah, is like weird. That was, that was a weird gig. <laughs> that, yeah, that was a really weird gig, man. <laughs> but we, we rocked up at this place in the middle of nowhere. It was like way out back hinterland of of the sunny coast yeah. and there was these bunch of girls all dressed in black it was a hen's eh yeah it was a, yeah, it was it was a hen's hen, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like one of them dressed in white and she was the hen eh and then the rest no, of no, the no, all black, oh, they were all black yeah fishnet stockings like yeah, really like horns on their heads dark like dark flower. demonic stuff yeah so dark too. demonic shit like flowery wreaths and shit it was it was kind of weird um, I kind of thought they were going to sacrifice me at the altar when I got there, but anyway, that was all right. It was like my second job ever, too. <laughs> oh, no, you poor bastard. <laughs> but it's all good. It's all fun. Um, so, you like, how long have you been in this industry, man? Uh, male entertainment. Well, I first started out as a topless waiter like yourself. Like, that's what I was just doing, you know, just going to hands, pouring drinks, playing games, having fun. Yeah. And then I just, as I got more involved in it, I got to meet more strippers, you know, mm. you'd, you'd meet them out and stuff like that. So I just started like looking into it, like what are the benefits versus um, risks, you know? Yeah. And I just came to the conclusion, like, you know. Worth good, it. Yeah, good, <laughs> good money. Yeah. Um, you get to have fun. You're in and out really quick, you know. Um, yeah. You get to dress up. You get to dance, you know. It's just all I have fun. So, yeah, I kind of just... Uh, Probably would have been two, yeah, just over two years now. I think I've been a two. male stripper, yeah, okay. but like, which has been like my full time work, yeah, um, like my main source of income. So obviously been hustling that really, yeah, one hundred percent. You do, you do well, man. <laughs> What's um, how long were you topless waiting before you decided to jump in? Ah, uh, it actually wasn't too too long into it. I think it probably would have been like my my sixth job. Oh no, in topless shit. waiting, and then I met a, a met one stripper, and I was just like, I want to do that. No shit, like, yeah. I have to admit, I kind of had a, the similar thing. Like when I first started, I was like, "No, nah, I couldn't do that." Eh? That's. Mm. But then I started to meet some of you dudes, and I was like, "These are like just good, normal guys. Like, yeah. like there's nothing special. They're just nah. like, they they just have let go of that, you know, fear of the unknown." And and like the first time I met you, you had um, you know, said to me, "Yeah, I mean, the first time I did this, it was scary as fuck." Yeah. Um. I think. I think anything that's new or foreign to you in life, you know, you're going to get that excitement, fear, whatever you want to call it, describe it as. Like, I remember I was, like, my first strip, I had no idea, some chick just hit me up because she goes, hey, you're stripping. I was like, yeah, like, this is my opportunity to do it. Yeah. So I had, like, two days to try and put together, like, a 10-minute routine. Oh, wow. And before I got there, I was just in the car, like, doing shots of vodka. Yeah, but... Like, just <laughs> shaking. It was, like, the most scary like, part oh, of my life, shit. man. So was that, like, was your first gig, like, a private kind of job that... Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, just a... Right. Just, I was, it was in a backyard for, like, a 50th birthday, like... And, and that, oh, yeah, wow. And, um... Yeah, was, there was guys there and everything, you <laughs> oh, know, like, yeah, it was pretty, pretty awkward. Oh, that's fucking But great. I was just like... I was, Way to throw you in the deep end. I was like, I have to, it's just, you, could, you just have to do it. Yeah. You know, you can't think too much about it. You just got to, you know, take on the challenge. You know, if I fucked up, I fucked up. You know, it's not the end of the world. But obviously that, that, yeah. that one decision has led me into, like, a career in yeah. entertainment. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like, you're right. If you fuck up, like, the chances of seeing any of these people again... That's so low anyway, like, whatever. Yeah. You know, you just do it, you just get the fuck over it. Um, and <clears throat> so, what was I going to say? Um, that's right. Um, 
you know, do you, do you still find that you get the nerves like every nah? <laughs> no, bro, no, like good? it's just such second nature now. Like, yeah. like last weekend I did like six six strips, mm. and you know I'm just casually in the car, like driving, just listening to music or thinking about completely something else. I'll rock up, and then I'll get in the zone. Um, but like, you just it's just kind of gone through the motions now. Like, because I know my routine's down packed. Like, I know yeah, my yeah, cues. Yeah. I know. All the different types of women I can interact with or have the potential to see, you know, I know how to yeah. deal with them and yeah. whatever. Like yesterday, I had a strip and I was just, I just kind of like rocked up and I'm kind of just like, I'm super chill, like whatever you girls need, I'm ready. Like I was ready and I was just waiting for them. And it was, there was dudes there, like it was a yeah. big, big party and I just kind of went out there like it was nothing. Yeah, whatever. So obviously yeah, I've yeah. just become accustomed to being used to it all, yeah. Yeah, totally. Wow, it's amazing. Because I know for me, like, I mean, I, I still get you know, the butterflies, like even just, oh, I'm just the topest waiter, man. But, <laughs> and it's not, it's not fear anymore. It's just yep. like kind of an excitement and a pre show, like, <laughs> like what's coming. Well, that's what it is. Like that, that's the, that's <clears> the beauty. Of, and that's why I love being a stripper is every job is different. Every yeah. weekend is different. Oh, like, yeah. you know, six, six group of girls, six groups of girls that I went to last weekend. Yeah. Every, every one of them was different. Everyone had their own different personality, their own, expectations yeah. of what they wanted from me you know so it is that exciting that's really true and like learning to sort of pick up on that and like gauge who you're dealing with and yeah and it's amazing like the the range of different people that you know want or the, you know, that want these services you know that, yeah. that actually like get you in like it's so weird we've had i've had so many different kinds of groups already that you're just like wow like, i wouldn't expect you to have yeah a topless waiter or a stripper or whatever but they do and it's just like just comes down to that innate human desire for fun and sex yeah, it's, and <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just, I think it's just accustomed to hens parties now, you know. Mm. It's a general rule of thumb that the bridesmaids, you know, order a stripper and, and yeah, whatnot yeah, and pop yeah. waiters. So like yeah, I've, you do with all kinds of, you know, introvert women who are like, you know, so yeah. intimidated by you to the opposite end of the spectrum where the girls just want to you know, touch your body and just yeah. get naked as soon yeah. as you walk in the door, you know, so it's, yeah. it's a balance. Yeah, 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 I feel, yeah, it's crazy shit. What would you say the craziest job you've ever done is? Oh, craziest <laughs> job. You must have done a lot of strips by now. So that I've done a lot of strips, yeah. One of my craziest jobs probably was I rocked up to a job like more inland, it was, so it wasn't really on the coastline, it was more inland, and um... I'll say that the further inland you go, the less kind of formal the girls can be. So I rocked yeah. up and, you know, introduced yeah. myself and, you know, a couple of girls, you know, some missing teeth here and there, kind of, <laughs> you know, but that's, that too. yeah, it's all good, you know, yeah. you do that. And I did my strip, um, which was fine. Uh, the girls had a great time. And then I was about to go, I was about to put my clothes back on. They're like, no, nah, we don't want you to go yet. I'm like, oh, sorry, girls, I've actually got another job. I've got to go now. She goes, no, they go no, nah, we're not going to let you go until we can have some fun with you. And I'm like, uh, that's not what I do. No. <laughs> and, and, so they, and they just kind of like, just kind of like, there was, there was more of them than there was me. Yeah. And um, they kind of just bought that. And that, there was like a, it was like a sex party at the same time. So they had oh, all these toys and stuff. Jesus. And I'm like, fuck, what's going to happen? Oh, like, what's happened to me? But, and long story short, they like, wouldn't let me go until they could all like whip me with the whip and everything so oh, like yeah, yeah, they all took okay. turns and i was like this is like this is way out That's of line right so now weird. ends up leaving i couldn't even sit down in my car oh, i no. was bleeding like what? yeah there was it was hardcore Dude, man i was like what the fuck? and that was i was kind of early on in my career so i didn't really know like where the where the line yeah, was but well, after that i was like that's the line that's yeah, not yeah, that's okay. not cool that's not happening but like yeah. i have like every job's kind of bizarre it's kind of yeah, weird yeah. you know as it is yeah which is cool that's hilarious, dude. That's that's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I did a job with a mate of mine, Pete, on this boat, and um, and the girls like they were kind of similar. They had this like box of box of shit that they wanted to pull out on us, and like there was whips and handcuffs and all that shit in there. And I just remember at one point, just like the boat pulled up at this um like sandbank. Mm. and uh, they got out and got on the on the sand and I managed to stay on the boat for the for the time and I, I was looking out of out and like Pete's like walking around on the sand getting like dragged along by the handcuffs getting whipped on the ass by some chick and I was like oh my god the fuck <laughs> that's the thing like yeah with girls on hands man they go they go pretty nuts yeah you know, they know they know like they know they're there for a fun time and a short period of time so they they take most of it they, the they take of advantage it. of it you know yeah totally Oh, that's good fun. 
do you see yourself, you know, doing this for quite a while still? I know you're training yeah. at the moment to be a paramedic. Yeah, so at the moment, like, I'm really comfortable with how things are going. You know, I love my job, and that's I think that's one thing you need to do in life is to do... Oh, yeah, you need to do yeah. something you would do for free. That's yeah. how, my, my common mentality. And because I love being a performer and, you know, expressing myself in that way, I love it. So at the moment, yes, I'll keep continuing to do it. Yeah. And like you said, I'm studying at university. Um, which I graduate soon, so depending on my circumstance, like if I get a graduate position as a paramedic, that's awesome, that's what that's I want. Great. That's what you want, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I'll probably keep doing it just as like a side job maybe, yeah. until obviously if I find a missus or something and just out of respect for them, then I might yeah. quit. Yeah. But yeah, at the moment, bro, because I'm single, then you can just do it I'm having fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, yeah, yeah I've, I'll keep doing it for now, yeah, I've got no plans on stopping. I, I yeah. could never go back to a normal job. Yeah, like, no, I could oh, never. Man. once you've tasted the good life, I mean... Let's be honest, right? Like this, it's a funny, it's a funny area of work because it's kind of taboo. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a little bit, you know, unspoken about and maybe frowned upon in certain areas. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when I started, you know, I was like, I had this moment where I was like, oh shit, these guys have got it right. You know, mm -hmm. we're all out here busting our ass for 40 hours a week to make what you guys are making possibly one night. Like, I'm not kidding, guys. Like, these guys are working. Like, what are you roughly making a six six jobs on a weekend or something? Um, for that, that if last week. If you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, no, last weekend, like, where I, had that, where I had that big weekend or big week of work, I should say. I think I pulled, like, 1200 over the weekend. 1200 bucks over a weekend. Yeah, there you go. Like, only so like, that's and more than the average weekly yeah, wage. And honestly, like, a lot of that time was just driving. Yeah. So, we get paid to travel. So, like, yeah, exactly. probably, like four or five hours was just spent driving just listening to my oh, wow. just sitting in my car driving so getting paid listening to podcasts yeah cruising right. around <laughs> quick 10 minute strip and you're good to go it's just unreal isn't it like yeah. that sort of really clicked with me i was like wow you know at the end of the day like i'm not you know we're not prostitutes like no. we're not actually selling our bodies like that we're, we're just <laughs> flaunting what we've worked hard for yeah, basically it's like it's just it's just provi it's providing a service you know yeah, it is providing and and exactly. it's good because like obviously if you go to the gym or you, and your diet and your health is your diet and your health are in check then you know like why not use it to your advantage yeah exactly you know like if you spend so much time busting your ass in the gym and stuff you know why not flaunt it and get people 100%. to actually pay for it? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, all, all you uh, Instagram influencers out there, your gym models doing all your shoots and shit. Maybe, maybe look at this as an option. You know? <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's worth it. Like it's, if, if it's you've got it, it, use it. You know, if you've got yeah, it, if yeah. you've got an asset in anything, if it's if it's a uh, higher IQ or higher intellect, or if you've got a a nick for business and you're really good at it, you know, use it your, to yeah, your advantage. To your you know, advantage, don't 100%. don't put it on the back burner. You know, yeah. use it. So, yeah, like that was a big thing for me with this. Like, I mean, I remember for a long time just being like, nah, look, that's just not me, you know? And, and look, at the end of the day, it's not. Like, this isn't my passion. I, I, you know, I'll do it as long as I sort of need to. It's yeah. great extra cash and stuff, but I'm not a party animal. I don't like being up late at night. Mm -hmm. I, I'm an early riser, you know, like I've got other priorities, but I w I've, I've trained in the gym for 11 years of my life now, you know? I've got to the point where my, my physique is you know, pretty good and it's pretty easy to maintain it there. I eat really clean. I've always been into my health and fitness and I'm like, shit, why not make some fucking money out of this thing? <laughs> it's a strength of mine, you know, like yeah. why not make some money out of it? Why not use it to get myself ahead? Yeah. So for me, like even if it's just a couple of jobs a weekend in busy season, that's an extra, you know, three, four, maybe depending on the job, 500 bucks a weekend yeah. that I wouldn't have seen otherwise Yeah. for the sake of just Walking around serving some drinks with a shirt off. Yeah. It's not hard. I think, I think the stereotype isn't as bad now. Like, it's getting better, but obviously a lot of people do see stripping as this, you know, egotistical male yeah. thing, you know, where we're up ourselves and we think we're, you know, the best and we're God's gift to women. Like, I, <laughs> I, I hear it all the time. I hear it being thrown yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, but it's really not. Like, when you actually dive deep into, you know, what it is, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's dancing. It it's, it's an art form. It's, you know, it's being able to... Put yourself in an unknown environment, dressed as a, you know a cop, a fireman, a whatever, whatever yeah. um, and being able to dance as well as provide entertainment, laughs, mm. um, and embarrassment for the hen. You know, like that's totally. what it's about. So yeah, you're there to embarrass someone else, not yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and and like obviously there are there is a dark side to you know the industry and stuff yeah. like, like like there is with anything, but there for the exactly. most part. You know, it's it's just a, it's just blokes like me and you. You know, just 
like everyday guys, like if you walk past me in the shopping center, you probably wouldn't think yeah, I'm a male stripper. Yeah, you know, I've um, had so many people say like, oh, oh, you do that? Like, and I'm not stripper, but like, just top, even just top of swaving, I've oh, really? Oh, shit, I would never have known. Like, yeah. It's true, like, you don't know. Yeah, we're just, we're just, we're just guys, we're just man. People, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just totally. guys who, you know, just have you, we're just, how I say this, we're just guys that just do what 99.9 Five percent of guys can't do, can't or, or won't do. You know, yeah, exactly. Like, like, more the point. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Just, just sort of stepping out of that comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um. So, let's touch a little bit on the like the paramedic side of things. Like, yeah. What's the um? Have you always, you know, had the desire to to help others and like to? Yeah. Is that that's a bit of a thing just for you. And, naturally, as a kid, like, I think I like I always put I always kind of just wanted to put others before me like put yeah. others interest to make sure other people were okay before i was okay like kind, cool. kind of that mentality and as i was, as i was a kid like i'd always see the lights and sirens and my parents would all tell me oh they're they're superheroes you know yeah, and every yeah. kid wants to be a superhero so yeah true. throughout throughout all my 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 childhood and my teenage years i always wanted to be a paramedic but i wasn't the best kid in school so i never got the marks so yeah, i kind man. of took the long route through you know increasing my marks at university and stuff like that but now i'm in it in my degree and i'm pretty much almost done um, How long is the degree for a paramedic? Uh, well, I'm doing a, a different course. I'm doing an accelerated course. So technically, okay. like, I don't stop studying. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, it's two and a half years, like, okay. nonstop. Like, t- everyone else is on uni break, but I'm still at uni yeah, right. at the moment. Yeah. So um, I get the degree done quicker. Perks of being a stripper working on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so I get the degree done a lot quick, like, a lot quicker, but it's at the expense of my free time and you know, being a bit run down because you're just always studying and always trying to yeah. learn and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's I, a lot of info to cram into your head, I imagine, just non-stop like that. Yeah, especially especially when it's, you know, it's, you can't miss it. Like, if you don't, say if you do a, a course in business and you don't pay attention, it's not that big of a deal. If you if you miss out on information true. as a paramedic that's true. and you give the wrong drug calculation or you do the wrong procedure for the wrong diagnosis, yeah. you can kill someone. So it's yeah. got, there's, there's, that, there's that extra weight on your shoulders. A level of pressure, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I love it. Like, it's always, I've always wanted to do it. Um, I will do it. Like, it's just, mm. you know, it's just a matter of, you know, graduating and finding a position. Um, but yeah, that's definitely my, that's my passion in yeah, life is, awesome. is help. Like Tony Robbins said, you know, yeah. one of like the key, I think it's like 10 or, there's like number 10 or 11 is key fundamental human habits or needs is to do more for others than what you would do yourself. You know, yeah. that's where you get fulfillment. That's where you get happiness. From. And you know what? The, the, the beautiful thing about life is that that is where fulfillment and success comes from. You know, if you can be of service to the greater, you know, good of the human mm-hmm. race yeah. and provide a service that, that will assist multiple, like many people, mm-hmm. you'll be successful. Yeah. It's the, the, the balance of life, you know, and, I think a lot of people sort of fail to recognize that. I know for me personally in my life, a lot of the previous side hustles or whatever I've, I've tried, I've had this mentality of, you know, how much money can I make? How fast? Mm. Like, skip the process. Just get to the good shit. And it just doesn't work like yeah. that, man. Like, as Simon Sinek says, you know, you start with your why and you focus on how can I be of as much quality service to my fellow human beings as mm-hmm. possible and that is how you will succeed. Yeah. It's about the process, man. It's about it's about mm-hmm. enjoying the little steps, you know, the every little um, achievement you you know, you you've got your mm-hmm. big goal, you've got your big aspiration which is like a big umbrella. Vision, yeah. But um you can't just, you know, shoot straight for that because you'll miss the steps, you'll miss everything yeah. else and you won't actually get there. But if you focus on leaning putting yourself leaning into it and putting everything into your small little goals you don't even need, you'll forget about the big goal and you'll just naturally just progress step by step exactly by step. Right. And, and then before you know it, you're like, oh my God, it's actually so close now. Yeah. You know, so. It's that whole iceberg thing, isn't it? Like exactly. The, the peak, the goal is like just the little, well, the end result is that little thing you see yep. above the water, but below there is just all that sweat and hard work mm-hmm. and effort and discomfort and all that shit that you went through to get there. Yeah. Um, I have mad respect for you guys. Like, I could never be a paramedic. I'm like, with gruesome shit, just, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> yeah, I love but, it, right? I have mad respect for that, dude. So that's killer. And it's funny that you're here because last week, um, I had an ex-military man here who was a paramedic in the military. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. There's two paramedics in a row. Yeah. It's, it's a, 
very respected job within mm. the you know, community, which yeah. is good. Like it's it good. Is, like yeah. once I put like you know you put the green. You, if you're from Queensland, we wear green. So if you put the green overalls on or the green shirt, you know people instantly have like a certain degree of respect for you, which is always nice to have. So yeah, one hundred percent. You know, like you, you guys are in a sense our saviors. You know, you are there to make sure that we are okay. So yeah, man, mad love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Mad love. Um, are you a, are you a Queensland boy from from? From like beginning? Nah, man, nah. nah. So I, li- I was born in Sydney, um, Sydney yeah. lived in Central Coast, which is just north um, um, yeah. of like Sydney. And I grew up there most of my life. And then I reached a point in my life where I wasn't progressing. I wasn't getting any further. So I kind of made this euphoric, um- unanimous decision just to quit all my jobs apply to study paramedicine at any university nice. I could get into Sweet. and that was my plan. I was just, just going to get in and then move. I, I didn't care where it was. I would have gone and I was fortunate enough to that get Griffith awesome. University. Fuck yeah, man. Sweet. That's that's killer. I love those stories, dude. They yeah. just light me up. You know, yeah. when someone's like, I just cut the shit and did it. I'm like, yeah. yes. Yes, you've got to do like a, a quote by Tony Robbins and I actually have it on, tattooed on my ribs. Oh, yeah. It's, um, if you want to take the island, burn your boats and with them all nice. forms of retreat because only then will success become a must. You know, if that's you, cool. you know, that's you, so good. Yeah. Yeah. That was like the ancient, like Viking mentality, wasn't yeah. it? It was like, get to the shore, burn your boats, can't yeah, go back, have to succeed. When people are either going to fail or succeed and they've got no backup option, they've got nothing to fall back on, they're more, more likely to succeed. Yeah. So if people have a boat, you know, it's their escape route, you know, there's, it's always in the back of their mind that they can get out of any situation they want. Yeah, I just burned my boats, I burnt everything, I left everything, and I just moved up here and I just started fresh. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah that's awesome, man. Um, I know before we started the podcast, we were chatting like real briefly just about sort of mindset stuff and mm-hmm. like um, rituals and routines that we have for ourselves. Yep. And I like, I love sharing that kind of stuff. I find it really valuable. So mm-hmm. maybe like, did you want to share with the people yeah, what you do every day that sort of yeah, keeps so, you on track? Yeah, so every day. So I'm, I'm a big believer in win, win the morning, win the day. Yeah, you know, if, you, if you can, Aubrey Marcus, <laughs> <laughs> own the day, own exactly. your life. If you, if you can, if you know, if you can wake up with a purpose, yeah. you know, you've already, you've, you're, you've set yourself on a good motion to, you know, do good throughout the day. But yeah, man, like I'm, I'm an early bird like you. I believe in the power of getting up early, and in like most CEOs in the world, they get up before anyone else. They've always, yeah. they've already got a four hour jump start on the day before anyone else has been awake. So I really yeah. believe in that. So I get up in the morning. Um, I quickly like wash my face, whatever. And what I'll do is I'll go train. Yep. So I'll go do my go to my training, um, see my coaches, um, and I'll train for about an hour or not, hour or so. I'll come back, and that's when my my morning rituals usually start. I'll jump in the shower, which will be a freezing cold shower. Not only does it help with my recovery, but it also helps with like just calming my mind, calming my body. Um, getting getting it's just like a big shock. It's like it's like having yeah. a shot of coffee when you jump in a really cold shower. And you move Man, because it gets things going. Yeah, so you yeah, got to you move, and I believe in yeah. uh, a quote of mine is um, emotion is just energy in motion. Yeah. So you know yeah. the emotions you it's feel. True. Yeah. That's the meaning of the word, isn't it? Or like yeah. or where the word stems from. Exactly. So so I'll have an ice cold shower and I'll do my my breathing techniques. So I'll I'll just because do you do Wim Hof stuff? Um, is that like really heavy breathing, or is that more? Yeah, like so, Wim, Wim Hof's method. Do you know Wim Hof? I know Wim Hof, but yeah, I don't know yeah, Wim Hof, so but like, I haven't really listened to it. His method is you do 30 to 50 deep belly breaths, mm-hmm. like in either the nose or the mouth, it doesn't matter. And then just sort of just let it go like an elastic band. So you'll be sort of like. Oh, uh, okay. You do 30 to 50 until mm-hmm. you feel like a tingling in your extrem- extremities and sort of like just overall like kind of buzz. It's a mm-hmm. fucking sick sensation. And then at the bottom of that breath, when you're feeling that, You'll breathe out and then you'll just hold and you'll hold it there just until you feel that like reflex where you need to breathe again so that your brain's like, breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay. And then you'll take another breath and it's been scientifically shown in a lot of studies that the act of doing that releases, like floods the body with like adrenaline and um, <laughs> I'm going to forget all the names of these hormones and shit now. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll link this, I'll link the video in the description because it's, it's really cool but um. Yeah. It's meant to be a great way of like getting you awake, mm-hmm. like starting your day. Yeah. Awesome coffee replacement for those trying to wean off coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, as you were saying, cold water um, immersion or just exposure mm-hmm. is, is like crazy beneficial. There's a study by Dr. Rhonda Patrick outlining something like 22 different incredible 
I might have completely got that number wrong, by the way, but incredible benefits to this from like anti-aging stuff to recovery, mm -hmm. like all sorts of shit, cellular repair, blah, oh, recovery, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, I'll link that as well because it's a, that's a really, really good reference for those interested. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, the, like I'm, I'm really backed by scientific research. So, you know, then there is a lot of scientific research with cold water therapy and oops. stuff like that. So that's what I do. And when I'm in the shower, why it's really cold I'll just take about 10 or 15 as uh, deep breaths as I possibly can till my, my, my lungs feel like they're just going to burst and yeah. then I'll shoot out real quick. Yeah, and nice. I'll do that and that just really gets me pumped. Um, and then once I've done that, I will close my eyes and I'll say three things I'm grateful for. You know, you've always got to start, you know, being grateful in life. You know, we have this amazing 100%. life. No matter your circumstances, there's always something to be grateful for. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, three, just three. It can be anything, you know. It can be, it can be great. You can be grateful for the beautiful sun that's out today. Yeah. You know, just be that's grateful. It. You and, don't have to get all crazy creative for nah. that stuff. Just be grateful for, you know, for what you have. Because, honestly, if you live in a first world country and you can't find three things to be grateful for, you need to take a good look at your life. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, and it's just three three things, three, three quick, easy things, and then I'll actually say one thing to myself that I can do today to better myself. You know, I always believe in, you know, being 1% better each day. So, you know, what's yeah. that 1% thing I can do? You know, whether that's finishing my research paper or um, try, uh, hitting this personal best lift today you know it, it, yeah. it can vary but it's just one thing that will get me closer to my ultimate goal of being the best version of myself yeah um so after that um i'll go meditate yeah 10 nice. to 15 minute meditation it could yeah. be mindfulness meditation could be some sort of shamanic meditation as well yeah. um and then yeah because i've got my diary i write i write down my to-do list for the day you know it Beautiful. keeps me on track is if it's also been scientifically proven if you know if you write something down if you write your goals if you write your to-do list you're more inclined to follow them 100%. and you get a massive rush of oh, endorphins when you're ticking off, off bro man, it's my favorite thing off. in the world i have a priority plan up every single day most of my weekends end up having like 20 things on it because yeah. i know i can be pretty productive in that time but um during the during the week every weekday i just have three things on that list every single day mm -hmm. that i that are my top priorities have to tick them off have to get them done and i just make sure that all my energy is focused on that because mm -hmm. i think something that a lot of people do is that that causes a lot of overwhelm you know is just trying to do too much at once yeah. and if you if it's all in your head man you just get lost mm -hmm. you just get lost and confused and you you just don't feel like you're progressing so as i have here on my wall somewhere mm -hmm. slow down to speed up yeah, you know I mean, take a breath, relax, focus your energy in one particular, you know, at, at one thing at a time, mm -hmm. and tick that off, and you'll feel a million bucks. Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that, man. Mm. As, as like I said, there's a lot of peer-reviewed journal articles that to back that kind of, you know, oh, yeah. scientific um, background. So yeah, yeah no, one hundred percent, man. Um, you know, it's like <laughs> it's not a race. You know, no. people just get so caught up in now and like now 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 like i've got to have this now i've got to have this now exactly and they just can't you, just, you we greatly underestimate what's that quote we, you greatly underestimate what you can Fidu. achieve in a year or oh. is it a year and you yeah and greatly you, overestimate what you can, can achieve like, in like, like a week or something like that or 10 oh, days yeah, or, 10, i think it was 10 years i think i forget who the quote was like, 10 years but yeah people People, greatly people try and shoot in a year yeah. and greatly underestimate what you can achieve in 10 years. Yeah, exactly. They, yeah, they, they, people like try and cram. Like, that's, that was a problem I had last year. Mm. I set way too many goals to do for that year and I just became so disinterested in it because I just felt like I couldn't achieve it all and it was, it yeah. was you know, it me down. So this year, I redone my, my goal planner um, and I kind of like, you know, simplified things a lot more, made them more, you know, realistic because yeah, like you said, people overestimate what they can do in a year Yeah. because yeah, I don't know why, but that's just how it is. And so I kind of have kind of taken a step back and now that I can clearly like focus on each individual goal and it shouldn't be and you know, it's, um, not too overwhelming. I'm well on my way for the yeah. year. So yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Cause we, we look at a year. And we think, oh, you know, it's so long, it's mm. so long, you know, oh, I can't have goals for that far away, oh, I've got to have it now, got to have it now. And then, buddy, the year rolls over and you look back and you're like, oh my God, the year's going so fast, this is ridiculous what's happening in yeah. my life. And you're like, hang on, this doesn't add up, like, where's the, where's the perspective here? It's yeah. like, it's just a different angle, you're just looking at things from a different exactly. angle and it's causing this skewed, you know, view of what a year means. Mm -hmm. Um 
But you know, the years do go quickly. Oh and yeah, man! Like if you just focus on each day, owning each day as mm-hmm. it comes, you know, man, you'll be like at that goal before you know it. Yeah. Consistency, persistence, dedication, discipline, just they're just skills you gotta train. There's a, there's only two days you can't work in a year and that's yesterday and tomorrow. Correct. So you know, you Correct. Just, just every day, just every single day, yeah. just be the best version you can, you know, do more for others than what you can do yourself, become a better version of yourself. And you know, if everyone if more people were like that, more people were compassionate towards others, more mm. people were happy. Um, and we got over this uh, epidemic, pandemic of, you know, mental health issues and stuff and addictions oh, God, and stuff. Bro. You know, this world would be a lot better place. Yeah. Um, Have you heard of all the amazing stuff that's going on in the States at the moment in regards to uh, using, like, um, uh, psychedelic drugs for treating all these, um, you know, PTSD and... Psych- psychedelic drugs, like mushrooms and stuff. Drugs, and yeah, like, like MDMA and um, I've, all, I've, I've, all I've, stuff. I've, I've read a couple of articles. Yeah, it's um, huge, man. I've been like, learning a lot about it. It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah, it's the, like, like crazy effective. Yeah. Yeah, so sort of, it's just all a matter of, you know, proving it in a laboratory and then yeah, having and scientists. Yeah, they're in that stage now. I think they're okay. in stage three of okay. trial. So it's, it's literally like the... It's almost proved. They reckon 20... 21, there will be like MDMA psych therapy okay. um, places open in the States where you can go and have a psychedelic experience that's supervised. That and um, yeah, and, uh, and, and, and like honestly, from what I can hear, the results they're having with like veterans and stuff in regards to you know, treating the PTSD and all these you know, mental blocks and um, un, unexplored issues and you know, unresolved drama within their lives is incredible the success rate sounds amazing so i've been really yeah intrigued by that and sort of following it because i don't i'm not really very educated in in that in drugs in that Mm -hmm. sense i'm very clean i've barely ever touched a drug in my life in fact i haven't touched a drug in my life (laughs) (laughs) except for except for i used anabolic steroids for about six months you know i was very involved with bodybuilding at the time it was a big thing for me i you know, it's a time I look back on and sort of wonder why, but you know, you, you, all go, you, you go through, yeah, it's an experience. You go through these, these things and you just learn and you, you, do, you learn more about yourself and you move on. And yeah, you know, it was just, it was just a big phase of my life. I was really interested. I just wanted to get bigger and yeah. look better and yada, yada. So I went down that path and explored it. But you know what? I'm glad I did because now I know. Now you know what's like, like you know, know. there's obviously, there's a big uh, taboo about, you know, steroids and stuff. Like I used mm. to do competitive bodybuilding as well. Um, so I know all about the industry and stuff, but yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, anabolic steroids, anabolic steroids get a bad rap and stuff like that. It is. Um, yeah. Obviously like it's, it's more of a personal choice than anyone else's, anything else. And, um, you know, I'd say to people, just do your research on anabolic steroids. Yeah. Like I've done my research on them. Um, yeah. I, know, I know like the molecular compounds of them, how they interact with certain cells and stuff like that. I think, it's so important to do this before you do, you mm-hmm. know, like to know, like I didn't, I just dived in, but. And it's just, it's just dumb. Like it, it fucked me up. Okay. You know, like it, like when I came off it, my, um, I didn't do PCT and oh, it just okay. like, I was a fucking mess oh, shit. for a couple of months. It was yeah. ridiculous. But anyway, um, yeah, man, like to do your research like that with, with these foreign substances, you know, you're pumping foreign, like synthetic hormones into your body. Yeah. You know, you, you need to know what that means. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of people, unfortunately, they don't. Mm. Um, but yeah, like, it's, it, that's with anything in life or anything that you want to learn more about. Is to do your research and to not go on Facebook and, and Wikipedia and stuff. You know, look up peer-reviewed journal articles. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. like yeah. randomized control studies. You know, yeah. that's, that's it just it, it. It doesn't grind my gears per se, but like it really makes me hold back when people try and tell misleading information and I'm like okay that's cool like if you've got the information but where's your evidence like mm. what article are you referencing <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they go oh it's just I found it on Facebook and I'm like that's yeah. not evidence yeah. like someone tried to tell me about uh, veganism and how plants are they read on a a Facebook post that plants can I uh, think it was like hear us or hear how we speak to the plants so if we speak negative to a plant it's going to be it's going to die or something and I said well, you know, is there any cool. article to back yeah. that up? And they're like, no, I'm like, because they were trying, well, to, they were trying to just, know? yeah, how do you know? Yeah, yeah. They were trying to justify but, eating plants for eating meat. 
Yeah. And yeah, that yeah. was just like, because I'm very passionate about it too. You are, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, like for me, um, that's an interesting one for me. Like, we, I mean, we all have our sort of personal ideas and thoughts in regards to that subject. I have seen the studies on the um, ice, the water. Have you seen the studies on the water in regards to the way we speak to the water and then the ice molecules look very different? No, I haven't, I haven't seen, seen that. that. That's no. really cool. You should check that. That's that's actually been around for a long time. Okay. So that one, that's really cool. You, they had like um, three or something, or maybe it was just two different jugs of water or something. And one day, like oh, during the day, you, they would come up and they would say all like positive, loving sort mm-hmm. of words to one of the of the jugs, and then to the other, it was all like words like hate and fear and you know, yada yada yada. Um, and then they sort of, I think they froze it and they found that the, the way that the, you know, the icicles formed Mm -hmm. was like chaotic and horrible in the, in the fear and discomfort and hate and bad energy water. Mm -hmm. And then really beautiful and like just incredibly intricate, gorgeous patterns in the, and it was really really fascinating. It's it's funny how you can relate that to psychology. If you think about that, if that happens to, you know, say water, you say, Mm. You know, how, how is that going to affect how, how you talk to people? And, and how we talk to ourselves. Exactly. So, obviously, if you're, if you're just negative and you have all these bad aspirations and, and comments to say to people, obviously, it's going to affect them. Mm. You know, people don't think really words hurt and stuff, but they really do. They really have an effect on um, you as an individual. And it, and it, shows, and it yeah. shows a lot of character about who you are as a person. It does. I think, you know, that's why I always try and promote, you know, being as positive as you can in any situation, mm. you know, um, looking at everything from every angle. Putting yourself in other people's shoes, not making assumptions. Um, so that's, and there is a lot of neg- unfortunately there is a lot, a lot of negativity in the world. Mm. You know, yeah, there is. And so, and so, like, it is so important to make sure that the way you're speaking to yourself in that world is really uplifting and positive and empowering. Yeah, because it's so easy to be overwhelmed by that overwhelming <laughs> negative kind of vibe that that isn't sort of intentional, but it's just slowly happen we've just become accustomed to it it's just become Mm. this social norm yeah unfortunately it's like eating meat it's It's become a social norm we've just been taught to do it from an early age so we don't think any better and we we don't think for ourselves so Mm. you know it's all about you know self-awareness it's it's called emotional intelligence yeah i've read a lot of books about it and you know if you're emotionally aware of every emotion you feel and you and you betray to people you become a lot more grounded a lot more um, self-reflective like if I'm about to say something to someone I'll take a breath um, identify the emotions I'm feeling mm. is this going to be positive or negative yeah you know because oh, um, I got into like not in a, like in an argument like more of a discussion with a friend and I was trying to because she's not feeling the best at the moment I was trying to she was trying to um, talk to me about stuff and it wasn't from a good place yeah and like I had to stop myself from saying something that would, might have negatively affected her, yeah. and I just had to take a breath back and to say, okay, this is what she, this is this, this is the situation she's in. I need to do the best I can to help her and to not, not, not lash out, but not to say comments to her that are degrading or anything. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's true, and um, <clears throat> just wanted to quickly jump back to a topic we touched on just before, mm-hmm. which was that. Um, what you were saying about how, how it grinds your gears, how people will just say something without sort of having the, the backup there. Yeah. And I think this is an area that we really very often do speak outside of our, you know, our knowledge, like outside of what yeah. we know. Like there, there are definitive truths or just, you know, absolute truths. Mm-hmm. And there are things that we perceive or think yep. to be true. And so often, like... I do it all the time. I'm not, you know, condemning anyone. I do it all the time. Or I am condemning you, but I'm condemning myself too. <laughs> um, you know, I will make an argument for something and then stop and reflect and go, hang on. I, I only know that because someone told me some one time. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that's the truth. Yeah. They just told me and I took it to be the truth. Mm-hmm. I don't know where they got it. I don't know if it's true. Yeah. And so often we do this and I, I think it's a dangerous slippery slope. And it um, so it's something that I've been very aware of lately. And I've become, I don't know if you've read the book, The Power of Now. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Right. So like becoming the observer mm-hmm. and, and watching yourself and 
I am impeccable with my word, one of the four agreements, mm. uh, book by Don Miguel Ruiz. You know, being, being the observer and throughout that, learning to become impeccable with, you know, what you say, yeah. how you speak. It's so important and it's, uh, it's been a really interesting journey and something I'm, I'm really enjoying because mm. I'm finding that I'm getting much better at it. I'm catching myself really regularly going, yeah. hey, hey yeah, 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 that's not true. Yeah. You know, or you don't know that. Yeah. And then I can correct that and be like, and you feel better. You do. You're like, I'm coming from a place of authenticity and, and a real place. Exactly. You know, I am being impeccable with my word right now. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I fucked up. I didn't mean that. Or I don't actually know if that's the truth. Yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely agree, man. Um, it's like, oh, how do I explain it? Um, how do I, how do I best explain this? I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> I, I would just say to people, do your research. You yeah. know, like, and get it from, obviously, okay, peer-reviewed journal articles mean, like, you know, researchers and scientists have done it, like, have conducted this hypothesis and they're testing the hypothesis. And you've got to look at articles that aren't funded by certain industries yeah. who have an input and stuff like that. The, the most authentic, authentic articles you can read who are that are pretty much definitively true are double blinded random controlled yeah. trials which means even the scientists don't know about the placebo and the treatment group and, and yeah. drugs stuff. you know yeah. it's fully just evidence-based research evidence -based, yeah. so you know if you can find an article to back up like your argument with, with, like, with something like that you know mm. then you have more you have more of a uh a case a solid ground yeah, like a, a solid foundation ground, yeah. to stand on yeah 100 yeah. percent Hundred percent, and um, I think like I'd imagine as well things like um, crowdfunded studies and stuff like that, where there's no sort of um, agenda yeah. behind. It's just like people want to know a truth, so they will fund a study, yeah. and the scientists are gonna go and explore it without there being, you know, that yeah. sort of slanted um, reason for doing so. Yeah. I'm a massive fan of Dr. Rhonda Patrick. I don't know if you found her before, but she does some, totally, yeah. Yeah, she does some really cool stuff. A lot of her, I think, all of her studies are crowdfunded, actually. But okay, she's awesome in terms of health, fitness, anti-aging, all that shit. She's she's really cool. She actually features quite often on the Joe Rogan podcast. Joe Rogan, yeah. Um, yeah, for those of you that are interested. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. What's what's next? <laughs> what what do you feel like talking about? What do you feel yeah. like? What do you feel like? This is a topic that I I could help or like help in or tattoos, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm covered, man. It's, it's a big cool. It's I got cool. Like, oh, 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 wait. Oh, that that arm's pretty much well getting done. Getting done. Other arms done. Legs done. Chest is done. Sternum's done. Ribs are done. Getting there. Going to Bali to get my back done. Oh yeah. What are you getting yeah. in Bali? I'm just gonna get his mat because I had a big accident. Um, oh yeah. With like an actual deer. Like with a deer. With a deer and like I got the antler. Like it snapped off and like landed in my lap. Like it went through the whole windscreen, hit me in the chest. Like I don't know how I'm not wow. dead. So, um, wow. and my, my aunt is a, sh a shamanic healer. Like she, oh, she? she's like an ancient kind of cool. healer kind of thing. Yep. And I kind of brought it to her and I was like, what's the meaning of this? And she explained it all in great detail and it's kind of just wowed me. And I'm like, wow, I'm actually really interested in this. So, um... Yeah, That's I'm actually going to get cool. like a probably going to get a massive deer piece. Sick. So m most most because most guys have lions and, and yeah. tigers and stuff, but um, I think stags are alpha they're males. Sick, they're, dude. They're, really they're really beautiful, cool. elegant. Mm. Um, they they're they're very protective powerful. of their lands and they're very powerful. Yeah. But um, they don't do that at the expense of other people's lives or you know yeah. you know stuff like that. So I reckon like a stag. I've, she said the stag's my spirit animal. Yeah. So cool. um. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, I'm just thinking, why not, you know? I've oh, got all yeah. these other tattoos. Yeah, that might as well. <laughs> might as well, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And what what age did you start getting the ink, dude? Oh, dude, I got my first tattoo when I was 16. 16. I was like to mum, I was like, mum, I want a tattoo. Please can get a tattoo. And she finally gave in oh, for my 16th birthday. So she signed the waiver and stuff, and I got like a little quote written across my chest. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, long story short, I thought I was the coolest kid in school because I was like yeah, one of, of the only ones with a tattoo and Fuck stuff yeah, like that. I would have been walking around like, oh, <laughs> yeah, as well. And then, yeah, you get to four. <laughs> Geez, like six years later, I'm like, I really dislike this tattoo. <laughs> so when I went to when I went to Thailand to get my chest tattooed, I got I, I got it covered up and stuff like that. You know, you do stupid things when you're young. So yeah, that's all right. So do I. I'm getting one lasered off at the moment. Which by what? 
I've got a. Uh, I don't even want to say for the people, man. It's not embarrassing. Uh, um, you're getting away. No, I'll say. I don't give a fuck. Um, I have on my right shoulder blade. I have a grease monkey because I'm a mechanic by trade. Mm-hmm. So he's like this grease monkey in overalls with a spanner and like leaning on a tire. And I love that one. It's funny. It's like even though I'm not a mechanic anymore, it's a part of me. Mm-hmm. It's a part of my history. It's a part of my interests. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, that's all right. That's all good. At some stage of my life. I decided it would be, actually at the stage where I was into bodybuilding, I decided it would be a good idea to go and get a monkey on the other shoulder blade that was matching him or a gorilla that was doing like that Arnie pose. Oh, oh yeah, that yeah. was a sweat, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it is just atrocious. Like I mean, poorly it's, done? No, or? it's a well done tattoo. It's just, just like, I just don't want it on my body anymore you know like it's just horrible so i'm like man i'm, I'm about seven or eight sessions deep in getting what is late is laser it. expensive yeah it's about 150 bucks a pop so well because so I, far i've spent double what i've got uh, what i what i spent getting the tattoo and trying to get rid of it and it's because still there, so. like i just got this done but i'm not sure if i actually want to go up my whole arm yet okay and because my tattoo was done this because we had the intention of going up my arm yeah, yeah. and now i'm thinking i only maybe only want my forearm so i've got the like these outlines here oh that, yeah. that are very light they're oh, only they'll like, come out in no time so yeah. i'm thinking like is it worth me getting a laser yeah and just lasering this top layer off like yeah, that yeah, only yeah. take one session or something maybe that's probably yeah like two two or something like two like Honestly, it's it's incremental. It's slow. Yeah, okay. But like that's fuck all. So that that should come out real quick, but um yeah. Yeah, for those who are interested in seeing what, what we're talking about uh, here. It's oh, okay. So it's just that. oh man. Yeah. It's just it's the, these all bit, lines yeah. here. Um Kind of Who are you kidding, man? You'll get the whole arm done for fuck's sake. Oh, fuck's <laughs> sake. Like I probably will, but like I'm just like, oh yeah. do I wanna cause like the thing with tattoos is obviously the more you have and the more darker they are, the less like muscle definition you can pretty much see. Because so yeah. I've got my whole chest done and I've got this massive black piece in the right in the stern, right in the middle. Um, seeing that kind of separation between yeah. the two pectoral muscles is kind of gone. Yeah. Like if you look on the side, yeah, it's awesome. Fine, yeah. Well, straight on, it's it's um disappeared. Yeah, that's that's a lesson I learned sort of after I started getting tattoos and then it came much more uh like a higher priority for me to, to think about where I placed them and, mm-hmm. and how I, how I put them and stuff. So yeah, it's a, it's a funny one that if you are interested in training and, and you, you do want to want to look good, you know, in the mirror and like the tattoos can help that, but they can also take away from yeah your, your shape. So you got to be a little bit careful there, but um, you've got, you got Tony Robbins. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually you got, got Tony Robbins. On yeah. Your, right on my, on your heart. On your, no, not no, no, my, yeah, my right, right tip. On your right tip. My right boob, yeah. It's like, and I've actually got, so I've got him there, and then I've actually got him like spreading his arms in that, in the, oh, yeah, in the, right. in the I Am Not Your Guru documentary. And yeah. He's like that. Yeah, he's actually, that's actually like right, right oh, here, yes, just yeah. under my boobs, yeah. Yeah, sick. So oh, it's pretty safe to say Tony's a... Uh, a big influence. Yeah, yeah influence. he changed my life, my man. Like, I probably yeah. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him because yeah, I, yeah. I, I just dove straight into his teachings and his work and... He changed my life completely, so I, I own everything. Mm. Um, and you know, because I get random tattoos all the time that have no meaning, so I was yeah. like, I might as well get something that has some meaning. And that yeah, that way, every day I, I look up in the mirror after the shower and I see Tony Robbins, and I'm like, I need to live every day like I'm Tony Robbins, you know, yeah. being the best version of myself. Yeah, he's an he's an awesome, he's an man. amazing dude. Awesome, yeah, dude. like I mean, for for some reason he gets like a lot of a lot of smack for like. From what I've heard, okay. it's not a smack for like, for like running these, you know, hype events that like get everyone up on this level and amp them up and then like people go away from these events and then they're, they're like come crashing back down to earth because the vibe isn't like mm-hmm. there anymore and they're like, oh, it was all just a, you know, just this like show and it doesn't really, but it's like, it's just fucks with me because I'm like, why is it bro that these people cannot take responsibility for their own lives? Yeah, exactly. You know, like you go to an event like this. You're not, I'm sorry, but you're not going to walk out with all the secrets to, well, no, you might walk out with all the secrets to unlocking a great, great life and an incredible potential to yourself, but it's not going to happen for you. Exactly. You, know, you don't go to these events and then walk away with a golden ticket that takes you to everything you want in your life. Yeah. You've got to put in the hard work. Exactly. You know? You've got to do the work. Like Tony's an amazing guy and he has incredible, incredible teachings. Mm. I love, I watch a lot of his stuff as yeah, well. Same. He's so, so dope. But you know, he's he's your guide, your mentor, your you know, he can lead, but you have to follow. Yeah. You know, you have to follow. You have to 
on board what he's saying and then act. You mm-hmm. know, like so many people will listen and learn, but they won't do the work. Yeah. People expect everything to be done for them. Mm. Unfortunately, like people have this big, you know, get this big hype, you know, oh, I know all the secrets now, I know everything, I'm going to go and apply that. And they get home and then two weeks later, they're just like, oh, don't mm. be bothered, like whatever. And it's just like, you know, people don't take responsibility for their lives or their actions. And that's why, unfortunately, people... Like, people always get angry with the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. You've heard that quote a thousand yeah. times. <laughs> and a lot of people are like, oh, that's how it goes. That's how the government goes. And it's no, it's because the rich people have certain mindsets. They yeah. apply, like, the, the reason why they're getting richer is because their routines, their habits, their daily goals are completely different to yours. Yours is getting up at 11 o'clock in, in the morning, yeah. having some uh, Coffee, sugar, yeah, 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 sugar sugar fueled cereal. Um, with some bacon and eggs, and then you might stumble to work for four hours at the, you know, whatever you're doing, and then come back home, have a couple of beers, and play the PlayStation. Yeah. No, these people yeah. that are rich and that are killing it in life and they're succeeding, they're up at 4 a.m., they're going to the gym, they're doing all their emails, they're eating right, you know, they're mm. contributing, you know, they're doing um, meetings, they're doing what you're not doing, and that's why they're getting richer. They're inventing yeah. the, the PlayStations that you play on and the, you know, like yeah. all this, like they're, they're finding ways to give, yeah. to be of service to people that uh, don't want to be. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just find it like a, a bit annoying that people like complain all the time. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Nothing will ever go right, but then they'll never put in the effort. Yeah, it's true. It's so, true. Yeah. And look, you know, like I'm sure for yourself, like I've been, I've been guilty of this oh, many, yeah, many, many a time throughout my life. It's, Definitely. it's, uh, Unfortunate, but the, the you know the most important thing is that you just pick yourself back up mm-hmm. and you get back on the horse and you have another go. It's a learning curve. It's just, it's, a learning it's curve. always that's that's the secret of life. Is always growing, always learning. Yeah. You know, if, if you stop growing, if you stop developing as a person, you die. You die. You, Correct. You know, wh- where's your life going to go? People have become so stagnant in life, and everything just gets moldy and and bacteria fill. That this is like a metaphor. Yeah. You know, people just stand still in life and they go, okay, I'm. I'm happy with where I am, but I'm like, no, you know, you keep moving, you keep pushing forward, you know, and that, that's how you that's grow. That's not the point of life, being happy with, like, yeah. well, funny, and funny enough, it is the point of life being happy in the moment where you are, yeah. but that's not the point in life, and being happy with, you know, just one level, one degree of progress, you know, we are here to evolve, exactly, and to push the boundaries, and to be bigger and better, and like, look at the human race, look what we've managed to achieve. Yeah, and that's with the mindset we have mm. in, in the, exactly. the vast majority of people. They say the richest place on earth is the graveyard because of all the hopes and dreams, dreams and desires yep. that died with those people. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't let that happen, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure trying not to. Hey, like I mean, I've fallen off the horse so many times, but you just got to keep going, keep going, just keep going. There's only one way, and it's proven to fail. Exactly. Quit, and you'll fail. Yeah. Every time, guarantee it. <laughs> pretty good. So that's pretty much it. Like, yeah. Know. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we can probably wrap this up, eh? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, 50 minutes, almost an hour long yeah. podcast. Yeah. I'm going for normally about an hour. Oh, okay, yeah, podcasts, sweet. Awesome, but, um, yeah. I think that'll probably do us. I'm feeling pretty comfortable. It's fucking hot in here. Yeah, it's really hot. I'm it's, like, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I, no, I don't, I don't want to show you my sweat patches. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Gold Coast, the, the pleasures. Yeah, it's really hot here at the moment. Brother, I finish every podcast with a question. Sure. And that question is, what is the single best piece of life advice that you've ever been given? That I've ever been given? Hmm, single best life. Okay. I'm actually going to say, I'm not sure if I was given it or not, but when I was in a bad place with, you know, life, when I wasn't really the best person I was, Mm. I could have been, um, and I was lost, I didn't really know what to do, I had no direction, I, I actually drove, it was like 11 o'clock at night, I drove to the beach, and I just got out, and was going on the sand. I just broke down, I just I was just crying, I didn't know what mm. to do with my life, I didn't know who I was anymore, I wasn't the person I wanted to be, yeah. I just had no direction, no nothing, so I just broke down, I cried, I was just sobbing, and I just put it out, to, I don't, I'm not religious or anything, but I just put it out into the universe, I was like, I, was, I think I was just screaming like, what, what do I do? Mm. And because back then I was so orientated about what people thought of me, you know, yeah. that was the main thing I wanted to do. I just wanted people to like me. I would do anything mm. for people to like me and stuff like that. And I don't know if it was in my head or what, and but it was like an aura and epiphany. Um, 
but it just okay, this is really weird, but it's, it just it was like a voice and it just said fuck it. Fuck oh, it, wow. as in don't care what people think of you. But do what you want to do in life. Don't be so um influenced by other people and what they think of you and what they think you should do. It's all mm. about you as an individual and, and intrinsically who are you and what do you want to do? So it was just that that was the moment like I decided to, you know, leave everything and move and go stay yeah. up here. It was just, yeah, it's just, fuck it. Just be who you want to be. Don't let any, ex- there's too many external factors. There's too many external yeah. influences these days. You know, social media, uh, magazines, uh, social influences, people, you know, everything's it's just bombarding everyone mm. and people become so just um, confused and stuff in their own mind. So I just think that people need to take a step back, look intrinsically, not extrinsically about what they want. And, you know, discover who you are as a person and what you want to do. So yeah. that's yeah, what I would nice. say. Just Beautiful. intrinsically look inside. Be yourself. you. Be authentic. Don't worry about the noise. Don't worry about the other <clears> people <throat> because at the end of the day, the funny thing is if you are authentically you, more people are going to like you anyway. Exactly. Mm. Most definitely. And fuck the ones that don't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't worry. Like not everyone's gonna, you know, like you in life. You, you can't know? please everyone. That's not the purpose of life, man. Exactly. I mean, that's the thing about this incredible world we live in. We're all so unique, mm-hmm. and that's what adds color to our life. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you get. We we all have our own tribe. Yeah, so it's exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, you you attract the people that you are like. Mm. You know, and and you become the person you hang around with. Yeah. So you know, you really need to look at who you are spending time with. Yeah. Because you will quickly pick up the habits that they have. So. 100%. You are the average of the five. Exactly. Correct. Well, this has been fun. Where yeah. can the people find you, dude? Where do you hang out online? And, um, and so on? Mainly, like, I'm not too big on Facebook anymore. I'm not too big on Snapchat, but, like, Instagram. Like, okay, it's bad. I call myself, like, an Instagram whore because, like, that's <laughs> my main point of We all are these days, bro. That's all yeah. right. Yeah. Um, Instagram. But um, my Instagram is at the Ferrugia. I know it's, we might have to type it in the notes oh, we'll, or something. Oh, we'll, do you want to spell it for me quickly? Okay, so it's T-H-E, so the, and then Ferrugia, which is just my last name, which is F A R R U G I A. And um, yeah, you can just find everything about my life on there pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Go check him out. He's an interesting cat. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been fun. Yeah, it's been good fun. Good to have you, dude. No, it's been good. I really enjoyed it. Thanks yeah. for having me. No, no worries, man. Anytime. Maybe we'll do another one sometime. I'm yeah. sure we'll have plenty more good stories to talk about by then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Peace out.